morning. Welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. And today on Anime Reaction, we watched the 11th episode of Kuro Makuro. If you want to check out our reaction to the 11th episode of Kuro Makuro, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section, because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. Don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks for watching! watching. Please support the official release. We now return you to your regularly scheduled idiots. Ding! So! And watch Kuro Makuro. <laughs> or else. So on this episode of Kuro Makuro, uh, we continued with uh, Fusunari's breakout. Indeed. So yeah, he uh, at the end of the previous episode, he had taken Yukina hostage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the make long arm was... Uh, operating without the pilot. Yeah, on a pilot taking an attack on the base. Yeah, basically he was operating it remotely, which kind of makes me interested to see if uh, maybe the Kuroma Kuro can yeah. be operated remotely. At least the uh, uh, the steed, the little boarding craft can. So it could stand the reason to that... To some extent. It stands the reason it could be operated uh, remotely if it's the same as the rest of the... Uh, Still forget the name, the Eiffelborg? Eiffelborg? Yeah. Paris robots? Eiffel Tower shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Fusanari drags Yukina around the base, uh, kills some inept guards. Oh. So, so much does that piss me off. Oh man, and uh, even, even Kuro Makuro couldn't escape the BS. Just, okay, so you got- literally, when that, when that one guard got stabbed, all the other one had to do was shoot. Raise his gun and shoot the guy. That's all they had to do. Situation is over. Yeah. Well, oh, that all right. First guard gets shanked. Second guard turns the fire. There's a third guard sitting there, even with all the commotion going on, not four feet behind. Them. Second guard dropped his gun, ran into the office to call somebody. Uh, and he was still, I mean, good for like. And then the third, yeah, the third guard wasn't even looking in that direction. Yeah. Anyway, so he drags. Oh, sorry, they walked up, right? When they walked up, they noticed Yukine, but they didn't realize that she's being followed by a guy with a sword held up to her. Who's not Kenosuke? Yeah. You can actually see the sword because it was just past. Those Yukine. guards were like the worst bottom of the barrel. Did they work on a little garden or something? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so then he uh, he takes her down to where they're doing excavations, <laughs> and he actually uh, gives her the information by accident that the thing that they're digging up is the, uh, the hinge, hinge, that, hinge he was, stone. that he was talking about in his. Uh, and on the way down there, they had a very lovely, lovely oh, yes. conversation. Oh yes, a little rapey, actually. Not don't say that on, don't say that on your first date. <laughs> don't say that ever. Ever, yeah. I like the fear in your eyes. I'm not gonna kill you. Oh, oh no, no, enjoy no. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hurt you. I, I seriously Damn. feel like that should have been the exact the, the thing that should have came out there. It, it sounded like uh, Jared Leto's uh, lines as the Joker in the Suicide Squad movie, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then. Uh, so basically, Fusanari leads her over to the Kermakuro, because that was his plan, and it, it all along was to take the Kermakuro back, right? So that humanity can, didn't stand a chance against them at all. And uh, at that point, he gets uh, he gets uh, confronted by Kinosuke. Yay! And we have a sword fight. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, because they they mentioned. Earlier on in the episode, that uh, Fu Fusanari, Fu, Fusanari um, came into the lab and stole his sword back. Uh, he went boom. <laughs> yeah, said that uh, Jiro, I believe, or J the 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 guy with the glasses. Yeah, the old guy. The, no, not the old guy. The. Uh, or the kind of younger researcher with the glasses. Oh, the guy with the fro? Yeah, the guy with the fro. Ah. Yeah, it, it was saying that he went boom. 
I I thought that he died, like that that the guy killed him. But that that was that was very interestingly put by Gramps there. Right. But oh, anyway, boom. so I think the 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 thing that I want is I want to point out in this that scene was the chick in the background hoisting the the sword for Kenosuke's she was, sword. She was acting like it weighed like thirty pounds or something. Yeah. She obviously doesn't look. Clearly. Well, <laughs> here, I guess. <laughs> so the the sword that I own is ten pounds. The big, the big one. That one, that one, you can carry normally, like like a rifle or something like that, and it would it wouldn't seem awkward to you at all, as long as you're carrying it right. You hold it with two hands off the handle, and it feels like. 20, 30 pounds, just because of the way the fulcrum and shit like that is, yay physics. But she wouldn't do that, even with the 10 pound sword. So that sword is either extremely heavy, or she is completely uselessly weak. Like hilariously uselessly weak. Not more like her arm muscles atrophied. Like, because, a katana is unless it's heavy to people who are not gnostic. Oh, oh, so she's not worthy. It's the only thing that I can think. It's like Molinier. Because <laughs> a katana is usually around two to four pounds. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I mean, they're really, really light. And they in, in the even hand, they for just for regular swords, they're light. Yeah. It it it's really weird. I don't. I didn't like it, and it was. Explanation, please. Yeah. Just the way they wanted to animate it. Yeah, it was a weird way to animate it. Something that was very interesting during uh, Kenosuke and Fusanari's fight was uh, when Kenosuke got a sword uh, launched out of his hand, there's there's light running along the blade when he's using it, and the light disappeared when it left his hand, but then it reappeared right when he picked it back up. Oh, Hmm. and can I say... That was an excellently animated fight between two swords. It was it was like almost like a Jedi Jedi lightsaber deal, but it was better in certain certain ways. Yeah. Awesome fight though. Um, but yeah, and then uh, it happened again. Yeah. The second time it happened. So after he stabs Fusanari, uh, the light disappears from his sword again. Even yeah, though it's still in his hand. Yeah. Almost like he like turned it off or something. Yeah. So I'm kind of wondering what the deal is with those swords. Because they're certainly interesting. Mm-hmm. He, he draws it and it's normal. And then when he actually goes to stance, it turns, it, it lights up or whatever. But yeah, so basically, um, Fusanari in a last ditch effort tries to kill Yukina, and uh, mm. Kanosuke stops him with a sword to the gut. And then uh, Kanosuke <laughs> splat Fusanari. Oh, yeah, so yeah sorry, Fusanari. <laughs> Fusanari <laughs> splat. Yay. Same thing. Yay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Need more coffee today, I think. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so Fusanari dies, which pisses off the the two agents who are sent there, Mulder and Scully. Yeah, so now now they want to be douchebags to uh, to Kanosuke. And um, yeah, actually, uh, very surprisingly, Kanosuke was, um, I guess, uh, sh- very shocked about what he had done. Yep. It actually affected him uh, very much. Interesting for a samurai. Yeah. Like, he stood there, like, shaking. And then he was depressed for several days. I don't know. I don't understand why. Well, it's been a couple centuries since he killed someone. Yeah, and but also, not to him. Yeah, to him, it's Flash. Yeah, to him, yeah, I mean, he didn't experience it's like you centuries. wake up. To, it's like how you woke up this morning. Well, also, uh, I was continuing on this, by the way, but he also met Yukina. The, the girl made him soft. 
I can buy that. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's common. It's commonly used trope. Yep. So, but uh, and then we finish off with Kanosuke and Yukine, um, trying to find out where Yukine was held uh, a few episodes ago. I'm sorry. Uh, when she was lost in the forest. Yeah. And she was attacked by the cacti. I also gotta say though, I I just keep thinking of Yukine from Noragami when you say that. But uh, so Yukine is, you know, walking around with a map. <laughs> that was so funny. Walking around with a map, getting lost. Because then, we have this person from the present day. Yep. Who's trying to use like the old fashioned map and compass? Who's getting lost? And then Kanosuke, you know, the samurai for 450 years ago. Eh, smartphone. We're here. We need to go that direction. <laughs> Way to turn the uh, trip of the guy from the past being totally clueless about technology on its head. Right? <laughs> that was brilliant. That was, yeah, it was, was very funny. epic. And then that was the end of it. Um, yeah. Well, they so they find where she was uh, where she was held the secret hideout, but it's gone. Like the hideout out. is gone. Like the ground around like ripped it. Ripped out of the earth. Gone. Peace. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. And then uh, it ends off with uh, with Kanosuke and Yukina um, having a lunch break. Eating some really ridiculously sized onigiri, and uh, yeah, the size of my head. Basically, a little bit of a, a little bit of a shippy moment. Yep. Oh yeah, very much. So. I'll always protect you. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all we got from the conversation because we were too focused on the onigiri. <laughs> Trying that's to really all the how to conversation was about, but uh, yeah, curry onigiri, really. And then at the very end, if you actually, if you if you notice the like split split frames, it showed a picture of one of the knights like this. Yeah, kind of Ethelbold. Yeah, it kind of looks like, like a, a female. Yeah, female Ethelbold. So we may see the return of Kenosuke's princess. Ooh. Oh, that's an interesting. Or thing something to about similar. That. But yeah, so that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm Rizzo. I'm Zero. And I'm DK. See, See you next time. time.